Hello and welcome back to Business Matters at the Hindu with me, K. Bharat Kumar. Last week, something curious happened. The Indian Patents Office refused an application by Johnson & Johnson to extend the patent on beta quiline, a drug used to treat tuberculosis. Why did this happen? But before we get to the answer for that, a tiny bit of medical knowledge. Tuberculosis is caused by a bacterium called Myobacterium tuberculosis. It typically affects the lung but can affect any other part of the body like the kidney or the spine. Interestingly, not everybody who is infected actually shows signs of the disease. So you will have those that are carriers and those that actually have TB disease. If not treated properly and in time, TB disease can be fatal. Among the biggest challenges in the treatment of TB worldwide, but especially in India, is the regularity with which patients ought to take the medicine but do not. And why don't they? Reasons range from callousness to lack of awareness that governments actually make available these medicines. Simple reason could be that the dosage is for six months, but I as a patient have taken this for one month. I'm already feeling better, so I'm going to stop. The problem is this. If the dosage is not complied with, and dosage can range from six months to some more conservative doctors prefer to treat for one whole year. So if the dosage is not complied with, then TB can attack the patient again. And the second time around, it becomes resistant to drugs. Drugs used in the first line of treatment. Drugs like beta quiline that came from Johnson & Johnson form the second line of treatment for TB. Why was Johnson & Johnson's application rejected? The company had applied for formulation patent on fumarate salt, that is a formulation salt of beta quiline. But the patent office ruled that the salt failed to qualify as a novelty. There was also a petition against the application and the petitioners contended that the salt form of a compound is not patentable in India as per the law, this is especially under section 3D of the Indian Patents Act. The act says that a patent cannot be granted to a mere use of a known process, machine or apparatus unless such known process results in a new product or employs at least one new reactant. In India, have there been other cases in the past where such applications have been rejected? Sure, the Indian Supreme Court had in 2013 rejected an application by Novartis to extend its patent on its anti-cancer drug. The court ruled that the application was for the crystalline form of imatinib misylate, and I hope I'm pronouncing this right, and that this was only a new form of a known substance, that is imatinib misylate itself, and hence rejected it. For J&J's TB drug in question, China has disallowed a patent appeal. In Thailand and Brazil, it's a subject of dispute. However, some African countries have allowed for patent to be offered to both the product and the process. What could be the impact of the patent office's ruling? J&J's patent of the drug in India expires in July this year. After the expiry, other manufacturers can make generic versions of the drug without infringing on the original ownership. It obviously means that the prices of these generic versions will be far lower than the original drugs. However, J&J still has the right to appeal the patent office's decision in the courts. After the Indian Patents Office announced its decision, J&J said that even if it had been granted the formulation patent, it would not have prevented other manufacturers from making these generic versions freely. In an editorial, sister publication Business Line says that this was not entirely true, for the company would have arguably had the option to use the process patent as a legal entry barrier for others. Currently, beta quiline costs between $350 and $400 for a six-month dose for a TB patient who is multi-drug resistant. After the patent expires, generic versions could cost in the region of $50 for the same dose. Government data show us that about 2 million active TB cases are reported every year and about 75,000 die from the disease annually. An estimate shows that 5% of these cases could be drug-resistant TB patients. Why is beta quiline important? An explainer in the Hindu tells us that alternatives to beta quiline are injectable and have strong side effects such as potential permanent hearing loss. Beta quiline, on the other hand, is easy to administer because it comes in the form of a tablet. Beta quiline, however, itself is not free from side effects. Studies have shown that it could potentially affect the liver or the heart over a period. Have you or a loved one had TB disease before? What has been your experience with it? We'd love to hear more from you in the comment section. I have personal experience in the family as far as TB disease is concerned. And every visit to the doctor 
came with a warning saying, do not miss even a single usage. It could mean the difference between life and death was the warning. It sounds alarming, but it's important. That's all we have for now this week. Till we meet again, have a lovely week ahead.